What up, YouTube? It's your boy Gary Lamb and Lady Lamb with you. And uh, today's live was inspired by an interview that The Rock Newman uh, had with Dr. John, Dr. Claude Anderson. And I just felt to share this with everybody because, uh, oh my God, this was this was intense. It was a lot to listen to it uh it it took me aback in a lot of ways it made me uh it, it gave me clarity to a lot of the stuff that i had felt and never really had a voice to so i don't want to take any more time because people got to go work in the morning everybody got to do their thing i just want to share this hour with you and possibly have some commentary after it uh this is not my creation this is from the rock new newman show uh his interview his stuff uh i am not monetizing this um if you want to send your super chats or you want to donate to the channel you can do so you got links in the description and all that jazz but this is more important than what we was going to go live with tonight it was just more important i'm glad i didn't set up all my pre live stuff because i would have had to change it because this just blew my mind so without further ado let's get to the reaction of the doctor no dr claude anderson being interviewed by the rock newman let's get to it perfect <clears throat> this evening on the rock newman show black economics today dr claude anderson discusses his new book a black history reading 101 questions you never thought to ask he'll break down how recent political moves on taxes judge appointments and health care laws will impact the black community economically that's coming up right now on the rock newman show <laughs> <clears throat> I have it there so I can respond to my extra for the phone. I'm sorry. There you go. Where are you looking at? The camera. show from the campus of historic Howard University located in the nation's capital. I'm Rock Newman and it is my desire to inspire you with personal stories of extraordinary achievement. Dr. Claude Anderson's new book, A Black History Reader, is laid out in a question and answer format. It begins with this quote, the social construct on race was deliberate and permanent. It is so fundamental to the issue of race that the topic cannot be considered in any serious way without understanding it. It is therefore the first question in this book. Mm. Welcome, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Rock, for inviting me back. This is, this book, <clears throat> this book, a black history reader, 101 questions you never thought to ask. I'll tell you what I did. I tore the table of contents. In my estimation, this book is so extraordinarily comprehensive mm. when it examines the issue of blacks in this country from the beginning of time of this country until now. That it's almost as if I don't, you know, I've got to stay away from thinking any one thing is a panacea. Oh, what? But this I have no idea right what panacea here, is. bomb.com you know so let me just start here so the black uh, black history reader 101 questions you thought you'd never ask you thought that uh you never thought to ask provides answers and solutions to 
to how and why black people have been consigned to the lowest level you keep of doing America's that? Because right I'm trying to get to a right a different screen. And economic acceptability. Now, when I read that, okay. I was like, well, boy, that's a very broad statement. That's a tall order. That's a high challenge there. Then I read the book, and it was like, it absolutely asks. That it provides answers and solutions. I just, I, 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 I want people to be aware of this book. I can, that I want folks to be aware. Now it says today, America finds itself embroiled in issues of the Confederacy, slavery, immigration, and a myriad of issues based on race and racism. And it asks the question: Why is race is such an enduring problem? And your answer is. For the simple fact that it's, it's the third rail in American society, nobody wants to touch it because if they touch it, all of a sudden that obligates white folk to do something in response to the fact that they have maltreated black folks throughout 500 years in this country and they systematically maltreated almost 100% of all this nation's resources. That, that's all the land, wealth, power, resource, privileges, rights, and controls of all levels of government into the hands of the dominant white society. And they've been locked in boxes into that, and now they're presently a permanent underclass. And why some want you to bring that up because that way they have some obligation. And so what they'll do, they'll push back and say, we're not planning on sharing anything with black folks in this country. And that's the dilemma. So Nobody wants to address the issues of what they do. Can't it's really not hear him on the screen. No, he's a, he's audio he's now, I think I just had to turn it Yeah, he, he got it now. Irrelevant in this society. <clears throat> no, I'm going to go past the question of how is it that blacks are always on the bottom. I'm, 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 I'm going to go past that because in, in your answer there, you just to a certain extent, you just answer that. That's right. See, that, 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 that 90, 98, 99, one half percent of everything of value in the country was maldistributed into everybody's hand except black folk. Black folk have been locked into one, only one half or one percent of anything of value of this country now for over 460 years. It is impossible uh, rock in, in, in comparative and theoretical terms for blacks to be a competitive people. Can't be done. You can't make it off of one half and one percent in a nation. That is, com it is a competitive society where people are competing. They, they can't compete. What they can compete with? Right. You ask the probing question. How is it that black civil rights, the black civil rights era produced more gains for other class groups than the intended beneficiary blacks? For a very simple reason. And that is through inherited wealth. Mm. See, every, see I, I just told you a few minutes ago, that ninety nine percent of everything was contributed and was maldistributed into the hands of the dominant white society, but now that now eighty seven percent of it's frozen, locked in there, it's locked into the dominant white society, into their trust account, banks, institutions, universities, communities, and, and their culture. You can't, the black folk cannot get access to it. That's why you, the present administration, like with Trump, one of the first things they're going to focus on is inherited laws, change the tax structure, so they can pass on all these rights and benefits into their offspring. And black folk, on the other hand. Are going to be confronted by white kids, for instance, coming that they get a white child gets gets eighty seven percent of what he needs to be a competitive individual in our society at birth. As soon as he hits the air in the hospital, he gets eighty seven percent because everything he needs and will have is in the white society. He can get access to it anytime he wants. But the black child, on the other hand, he can't compete because when he's born in that same hospital, he can't. There's nothing inheritable that he can that he can can gain. So he puts everything that the, that the uh, that blacks have been focusing on for the last hundred years is not inheritable. Food stamps, welfare, public housing, and a job you cannot inherit. It. So the black child is non-competitive. He can't compete with a white child. So in the morning, he, even if he wants a job, he got to dress up and go to a white neighborhood or somebody else's neighborhood try to look for a job. It's impossible. He can't compete. That's why he's a permanent underclass. Now, I, I wanted to stop right there permanent underclass. And, and talk to you guys about this whole segment right here. Mm -hmm. Now, I've said this many, many times in my past dealings with uh, people. I used to be a part a, a part of a um, organization called MDI. It's Mentor, Discover, Inspire. And uh, the reason why I went and joined this, well, actually uh, a good friend of mine, um, he pretty much, he, he invited me and um, I'm like, all right, cool, I'll go. And it was one of the best and difficult experiences of my life because it challenged me as a man. 
it absolutely challenged me as a man. Um, my dad died when I was 16 years old, so I didn't get the tutelage that I needed. So I seek men out. I seek men out because I was plan on have kids and I didn't want to, you know, raise them wrong. And, you know, I'm walking around with all this ill-mannered, you know, stuff that I learned from the hood and, and the streets and, and my mom and my dad, and they were ghetto as hell. So I had to learn white America in order to work in white America. So I put myself in a position where I can learn from white America. And you say that because majority of the, the group were all um, all Caucasian. They was all white. They was they was usually white. Usually now white they came from different backgrounds and stuff like that. It wasn't like they were all Russian or just whatever. I mean, I don't really. What I get from white people, they do not associate with one another the same way that blacks do. Mm -hmm. It's like they if if. They just don't like it's and I get all that. I get why they don't do that. They do that. But <clears throat> one of the things that really hit me hard was listening to what he said that my son has no shot. And that startled the hell out of me because I see why he doesn't. I mean, I broke my ass. I, I, I did my in my resume the other day. You know what I did? My, I did my resume. And I'm looking at all the stuff that I did in my life. And I'm like, holy cow, I did a lot of stuff. You know, salesmen, sales positions, uh, health care, uh, you know, construction. We, we're talking, you know, box cut, box, box truck um, uh, where, driver. Where a lot of y'all met him. Right. Yeah, it's like I did a crap ton of stuff. And I'm broke as hell. Like, I'm broke, bro. I don't have any type of way to hold on to that money. I just don't. It's just everything that I needed, I had to purchase with a price and usually with an interest rate towards it. So if I wanted to build a business, I had to go get a loan. In order to get a loan, you need to have good credit. In order to get good credit, you have to start with what we call a secured credit card. All right. And you get the secured credit card. Now, I didn't start with the secured credit card. I started with those payday loans. Remember those payday loans? Yes. I, I'm going to speak to the point here of um, any married folks out there, the husband or the wife, whichever down apart, you know that we end up um, going through whatever the journey is mm -hmm. that the other spouse is going through we go through it with them so when you were in mdi i went through that with you yeah yeah um there were some really dark times because like you said you went through the process with these group of men and a lot of them you all had some dark paths some experiences which you were not allowed to um divulge a lot to me yeah but just yeah. just the reaction and the response from the experiences y'all went through and that you talked about and you know the, the hiking trips and the meetings and the, you know you would have to be harsh and get in each other's face and i'm like why are you taking all of these freezing cold showers oh i had to you know own up to something and all yeah. of this stuff yeah yeah, yeah. and it was like yeah. what yeah. you yeah. know i forgot all about that Thank i you did for not me. i yeah. did not i did not forget mm -hmm. It was so much. And I mean, I'm cooking for parties and I'm like, what is going on here? Yep. Yep. Um, just to 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 be able to have that. Well, you were always looking for male mentors. Yeah. So to and they were majority of the good I mean, I met a couple. A lot of them were older men. Mm -hmm. A lot of them. And um just that in and of itself, when you brought this topic, I'm like, oh, God, Gary, all right. I'm well, going uh, yeah. to jump off this list, with, list yeah. with you again. Now, the reason why she's saying that is because we're very intimate. Well, I'm not intimidated by it because I trust that you get where we what this is all about. I trust that you know me well enough to know that I'm not just going to bring you no bullshit. You know what I mean? Like, I trust that. With that said, what he's got to say is alarming to both of us. Right. It's alarming because it's 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 it alters my thinking about a lot of stuff. Right. If my only shot at building wealth is in the pockets of you people. Right. And I don't mean by you people like slavery. No, I mean, like 
it's not something I can get access to unless I come to you. I have to come to you for a job. I got to come to you to build a business. I got to come to you for everything. There's not a section where I can just say, hey, we, this is where all the black people are. We're just going to build generational wealth and keep it moving. Our money leaves our hand as soon as we get it. We never get it back. And I think that's one of the um, most daunting things when I was like trying to take notes. Mm -hmm. I would used to write a lot real fast, but yeah. in time for that right now. So right. Um, when he said 87% of funds are frozen for African-American um, mm -hmm. children that were born in the same hospital, but their counterpart of the white children, the funds were already locked up in trust funds, et cetera. But the black families, they couldn't get access to it. 87%, mm -hmm. that's a really high percentage. Yeah. So, um, I mean, anybody that you guys have known him, some of you just met Gary in our family. And you, some of you've known him for quite a while. And he always talks about how your dad passed away when you were younger, that time frame when every young man needs a compass for life and he didn't have one. So imagine that with two sons. Right. Okay. Just imagine that. Right. Now um, <clears throat> and the inheritance. My thing is the inheritance. You were talking about not being able to, not having, you know, the inheritance that maybe a, a, a young white boy is born with. Mm -hmm. um, generational wealth is what he talked about. Mm -hmm. And you were given a guitar. Right. And we do, I mean, this oh, is you're a, talking a about that. Constant yeah. Rhetoric, a constant, mm -hmm. a constant theme. Over and, I, the and, years. I, and you know, it's funny because I try my very best to get through to him about that. But it just didn't register. No, just in general. You've said it many times over the years. Not anybody in particular. I'm just talking no, no, about... No, no, no. No, what I'm saying is I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. That particular time, I'm saying it just didn't register. There was no way for me to bridge the the, the communication gap when it comes down to the, 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 the struggle that Black people feel. There's no way for me to communicate that to you because it's like, yeah... I get the whole, and this is, and we, and I always lose people here, but I have no other way of saying it. It's there's no way for me to say it other than the black struggle is unique because we've just like he said, we've been shut out, shut out. We don't have any real way to accumulate wealth and keep it. Case in point, in Patterson, when I we moved there, it was mostly blacks that lived in Patterson. When we moved out, most of the block was Puerto Rican. So yeah, it's it things change over time, right? So in that city where um where we lived, my parents lived there and in the sixties and seventies, mm -hmm. it was a predominantly Italian mm -hmm. town. The whole entire city was predominantly Italian. As time went on. Fast forward to the not 80s, 90s, and then the 2000s, it was nothing but um, multicultural. Like, you know, I, everybody would be like, oh, where do you live? And I would say, you know, like I live in the United Nations because next door you have a Jamaican family, on the other side you have a Puerto Rican family, behind you you got a white family, mm -hmm. around the corner you might have a Polish family. Mm -hmm. Like everybody lived there. Right. Which, you know, we always like that, having multicultural families. But yeah, when you're right, you're right. I mean, you, I mean, I would just go outside like, what kind of music I want to hear today? Okay. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going, going to the Caribbean. Right, right, right. Or, you know, I'm going to go up the block and I'm going to be in, in, in Boricua and in Cuban town, you know, like whatever you, you know, pick, pick, pick your poison as, you, as mm -hmm. people say. So that's what it ended up being. And then on the, the other part of town, I'm not kidding you guys, the half of the entire town was locked down and still is to this day growing more so mm -hmm. um, with Middle Eastern. I mean, they locked it down. You cannot get in there because everybody that is there, they're all family oriented, family owned, doctor's offices, restaurants, every facet of life is mm -hmm. owned by mm -hmm. Middle Eastern families, right. everything. Mm -hmm. So, and this is what happens in a lot of, in a lot of cities similar to that. It's just the ones that are there are not able to establish and have a come up, so to speak, as they should. Mm -hmm. But then like you were saying, other cultures come in and just, I mean, take over. Now he's going to speak on why that is. 
Okay. There's a reason for that. And I didn't know there was a reason for that for years. I, you know what? I'm going to let them play it. And I'll just, and I'll talk about that. Cause it's here because all those, I was like, Holy crap. It, it really, t it took, it took a bad weight off my shoulders and put a good weight on my shoulders. Oh boy. You guys, you have no idea. It, it, it really, it really changed. It shifted everything. It's whew, let's just, let's just continue. I think there's a very, very slight chance that it can be resolved, but but it's going to be up to black folks to do it though. Hmm. See, because 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 they're going to be pushed back from the dominant society because they got a social construct that excludes black folks. Listen to this. And, and, and I'll just so so later on, you ask me ask me about it. The, the key is going to be how black folks classify themselves. See, first of all, black folks got to classify themselves as as native blacks. Make sure there's a distinct difference between. A black coming from Africa and a black coming from the Caribbean, native mm -hmm. blacks. That means people that that were born and raised in this country four or five hundred years ago that are peculiar to this. That's it. And, and if you focus on that, then say, now what is special about those native blacks? Then you have to say they are exceptional people. Black people in America are set exceptionally are special people. Now we have politicians running around the country every day talking about America is an exceptional nation. And then and because America is a separate nation based on the fact that they have a democracy, so will be the cradle of democracy, and that they are, have the most liberal immigration policies, and that people can, can vote to all these kind of things. So they said, therefore, the American political energy is supposed, is supposed to be an exception, and therefore, they should be given special favors among all the nations of the world. What I say is that if that's true, then black people in America are exceptional people. They're an exception within an exception hmm. because see, nobody's been treated like black folk. You keep talking about this is a, a land of immigrants. And see, but black folk are only non-immigrants. You can't keep bringing black, bringing immigrants into the country over black folk and giving them special benefits hmm. in that term. That's why black folk can't compete. And, and can I take about a minute to get this point out for you? Yeah. See, there are four or five things. They're right now the debate in DACA. Immigration law, sure. That's going to be the death knell of black folk. That's going to be the death knell of for black folk. Keep that in mind. DACA. set up his first immigration law in 1790. It said this is an immigrant nation. And any people of the world that can pass for or look like whites can come here and get special benefits for us. They can come here and get it. But the only people that can't get it are black folk. And then everybody was invited to come here. That's And they maldistribute all the resources. And they started out by putting most of the resources start with the land, which black people couldn't get. But let me go back to you. So most progressives, to use that term, when they look at the when they look at the policies of this particular administration that's in power right now, mm -hmm. Republicans control the White House, the Senate, and the Congress, and you talk about DACA, the sense is that most most progressives, most black folks want to do quote unquote the humane thing and make sure that those that are born here have have rights and are not exported and their parents aren't uh, are, are put out of the out of the country so are so do are you on the other side of that argument no but what, what I say is what I'm saying is that to do that, it is first is unjustifiable. It's not, it is illegal and unconstitutional. And it's the worst form of injustice that you commit against black folk. Because what you're violating is black folk's rights. So see, you, you cannot see the thirteenth amendment, see let's go back for a second. The thirteenth amendment came into existence after the Civil War. It says very clearly Ron, that 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 it mandates that that that, that black folk be treated in all manners similar to whites in this nation. Now but see, but immigration policies and bringing in immigrants only negatively impact black folk it's not impacting anybody else black folk are the only injured parties by immigration now <clears throat> did you hear that yes yeah. i was literally just talking to a special mother you know what I'm talking about oh. and she said something that 
smacked me in the face. She said, they're coming here not to take my husband job. They can't get my husband job. But everybody that's on welfare, food stamps, and all that stuff, they're going to take the jobs that you can get. And I sat there and said, hmm, don't forget the job that they took from me, right? Because I now, case in point, I was just talk, talking to him and I was telling him about how there was a situation where I was working at Community Options at the time. And they, I was- the Healthcare. Be, right. Mm -hmm. So what I was doing was I was, I was um, filling in and also interviewing for a position that was at this day program. Mm -hmm. I didn't really want to work the houses anymore. I wanted to do something. I wanted to be some concrete stuff. Nine to three, I'm out. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't want to be stuck there because somebody called. I didn't want that. Uh, the person who was in charge of that day, that, uh, day program, um, I guess she liked me, you know, but I worked there for about a month. And um, there was a black guy that worked there, too. And he basically told me I'm not going to get this job. Did he? Yep. He said, listen, uh, they only got me because they need the ratio. Oh. I didn't want to believe that. I really didn't want to believe that. So I went to her because he told me around the, the second day. Right. And I'm like, hmm. you know what I mean? Like, all right, let's let's test this. You know what I mean? Let's let's not just walk away from it because somebody said something. What if he's wrong? He can be jaded. You know, so I gave it a whole month. And I gave it my 100 percent. I'm talking I was there 15 minutes early and I left 15 minutes late. I stayed. I worked. I did what I had to do. I was constantly attentive and I asked for the job. I said, well, I've been here for about a month. Um, What do you think of my work? Open. What if, right. She said just like this by putting her hands over her chest. This is my family. And I want to make sure the person that's here is right for my family. This is a Puerto Rican immigrant woman, mind you. And I sat there and I said, thank you. This will be my last day. And I went back to the group home because she wouldn't hire me. And that's not the first time I've had that type of experience. So it's like, you hear this stuff and you're like, she's like... Wow, this is this is this is intense. I mean, sometimes folks get into those positions for that reason, not to bring this up, but it just came to mind. Mm -hmm. Um, we're in a different day and time now, y'all, right? So oh shit, this is muted. Holy crap. Oh no, no, no. That that's your that's yours. I'm fine. There we go. Perfect. Sorry. Go ahead. I because you see, I saw the music. I was like, I can't be muted. This is no way. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, what was gonna say? You were talking about um, um, the other person of um... um. You get a lot of folks now that that do that, mm -hmm. um, that have their own agenda, right? Now and so, just think about it. I mean, a lot of folks now that you know say have a position, um, a certain type of position, they get the position so that they can bring others in you know, mm -hmm. like them. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I mean, not to push the issue, but a lot of LGBTQ, a lot of my, minority, which a lot, which people try to clump them together. They are not in the same exact category, right? you know, guys, but you know, it's, it's similar to that to say, Oh no, this is my family. These are our folks. Yeah. And I'm saving that position for, for one of us. Nine. Yep. Yeah. So now, it sucks, but it's true. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely true. They're not going to help us. And I was just talking to him and he was like, he even said that you should try to work with Chinese. And um, I'm like, why would they ever help their competitor? Hmm. Like that's don't, they don't even, they don't even think like that. They're nowhere. Well, they, they're a very powerful um, 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 portion of, of, of America and they're doing even better than whites now and all the other stuff, or at least they're making more money and they got their, they're accumulating more land and they're busting our ass. And it's like, well, yeah, there will, they will never ever help us get out. 
because they're trying to get their people here. So there's no incentive for them to help us. Yeah. And I'm like, holy cow, this is crazy. Because I'm like, where we get our help from? And it's like, okay, like he said, work with each other. We can't trust each other. Yeah, unfortunately, that's one of the biggest um, the biggest obstacles, and there are many mm -hmm. in the black community. But that's one of the biggest obstacles. You look, and we just talked about being in the neighborhood, right? Mm -hmm. I know for a fact you have Hispanic folks. They have their own restaurant. Everyone working there is Hispanic. You have um, Italian families who are family owned. Majority of everyone in that pizzeria or in that restaurant, they're all Italian. Yeah. They're all related. Mm -hmm. um, same difference for, and don't get me started, you guys, on, um, on on Hebrews and Jews. Love them. Best bakery, great food, kosher, all of that. You will not find other cultures there unless they're in the back somewhere cleaning up and you will never see them. Mm -hmm. It's just, that's just how it is. Right. Um, it's it's this is my family yeah and i'm saving this position for my family that that's across the board many cultures do that right you know you can't go to an african restaurant and find a quote unquote african american just naturally born us citizen in an african restaurant you don't even they get don't get along they don't get along for the mo i mean there are some but for the most part and i know for experience you're not going to go to a beauty parlor and it's an african-owned beauty parlor and you're black and you're just going to go in and get a job they will hire their own right. from ghana nigeria wherever but it will not be you first right so and that's just across the board that's just how that goes so unfortunately you have henry you know jones that you know has his shop and he's trying to hire, you know, his folks or whatever. And you, you do get that because, you know, the neighbor next door needed some work, but he may be better at that position and at that industry than you, then you, you can't always get that same camaraderie mm -hmm. amongst us. Right. You don't. So that, and you're right. And he's right. A lot of them will not hire their own because there's this stigma surrounding black folks. They are, we're hard workers, but there's a stigma surrounding black folks that they're lazy. Right. So it makes it difficult. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to interview so-and-so and so-and-so. -so -so. Hey man, I'm sorry. I, I'm not going to be able to give you the position. Nope. I gave it to somebody else. Yep. It happens. All the time. Yeah. Let's continue. Then you go to the, go to the 14th amendment. The 14th amendment says that 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 black remember the 13th 14th 15th amendment those things were written for black folk that black folk must must have have, have uh, due process and equal protection under the law if black folks are the only people being negatively impacted by immigrants you're violating the 14th their 14th amendment mm -hmm. there should be a, all kind of lawsuits right now raised by black folk and there's, there's no money to do that 1865 and 1866 said very specifically rock that every level of government is mandated to use all necessary means to lift the badges and incidents of slavery off the shoulders of black folk. Now, the, the, now here you are bringing in all these immigrants over black folk. And here's what you do when you bring them all into black folk. Because it, it, you do the same thing they were doing in 1790 when they brought in all these immigrants. You bring in million immigrants over black folk from Europe, Eastern Europe, Western Europe, Northern Europe. And they brought them in over black folk. When you bring in immigrants, here's what happens. You got black folk that are branded, that are branded. They don't get any benefits for being a living in this country because they're branded as being slaves. They get zero benefit. Now they're not immigrants. Now watch what on the other side. Now when immigrants come in, watch the benefits they get. They Listen to this. Black folk at two hundred miles an hour, pass them. That's why in all these cities, in Chocolate City, they do better right here in Chocolate City. Now they're underneath the immigrants. Immigrants they come in the country, they get a they get a point over black folk for being an immigrant. Blacks are the only non immigrants. Two, they classify all of them classified as whites. It, uh, the Arabs, Asian, Hispanic, they all been reclassified as whites. Even American Indians. Back in the 1890s, became classified as whites. They get a point. That's the second point. They get over black folk in getting access to resources and benefits. The third thing they get, they get the benefits for being put into a into a into a minority category. They're classified as minorities over black folk. Thirdly, they come in with a culture that they can now they can establish a culture that they can now build businesses, industries, and relate back to their homeland. And lastly, what they can do, they also bring in in a in a, in a, in a, in a religious aspect. And, and business opportunities for their people. Black folk get nothing, and they can come in and take and dominate black folk. That's why right now, black folk have been buried as an underclass. That's why in this black labor, uh, black history reader, if you look at the second question, it'll show you that the last statistics that came out from the United States Department of Labor, 
said that everybody's over black folk. Black folk have not moved one eye older in in 150 years. Wow. They're still on the bottom, underneath the society and outside of it. You said something earlier in a, in a wow. answer where you said that you talk about native blacks. And so that clearly uh, sounds as if you are delineating native blacks versus someone that comes here from Bermuda or Jamaica or wherever they may be. That, that right. they may come from that is that is black that's right and the purpose of that is what because we mean because you on the surface it would be like hey everybody here that's black gets treated a certain way why are you making that delineation that is an excellent point you know why because you see those people coming in from jamaica are coming in from africa they have not been treated like black folk in this country hmm. the first thing and secondly, historically, historically, we haven't, we haven't had those historical experiences. They come in here voluntarily. When they come in here, they bring some cultural aspects from Africa. They, 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 got, they can go back any time they want. But the black people in this country have, have been uh, exceptional people. Nobody's been mistreated, maltreated like them. Black folk are exceptional. They're the only people that came here uh, uh, out of one, one. Two, they're the only people that denied their humanity. Three, they were the only people that denied a right to enjoy the fruits of their labor. Four, they were only the people that denied the right to participate in government. Five, they were only people that denied the right to vote. Six, they were only people that denied the right to have an education. Seven, they were not the only people that denied the right to have a business. Eight, they were the only people that participated in every war that this country has had. Listen to that. Childhood, but whose mother country has never been against this country. All those immigrants come from countries where they fought America and they came in. And, the, and the, the seven, that they are the oldest and most, most patriotic people in the country. Not, not, not the Confederates in the South. They're not the most patriotic people waving the Confederate flag. The most patriotic people in this country are black people, native blacks, because you see 99% of all those blacks have been a direct descendants of slaves. They've been here before 99% of all the other people ever arrived in this country. Yeah. I hear them. Don't Gary Lamb stare me. I'm sorry. Don't, but... don't Gary Lamb stare me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That took that threw me for a loop. Now I gotta research all this to make sure, but damn it, it's Dr. Carl Anderson. I'm pretty sure he's accurate. You know what I mean? He's he's well known. People know who this man is. He does his research. Mm -hmm. So I can he can definitely I will take his you word. You could probably for it. take it from You know what I'm saying? It's like I can take his word for it. So for him to say these things, I'm like, bruh. That black people are the most patriotic culture in the US, not the ones uh, confederate because the black people were here first now that's what he means mm -hmm. i don't think he's trying to say we're going to match pride with pride like, you know what i'm saying like, like that's what? not what he means okay. he means that we are the most patriotic because we got no else well else to go mm -hmm. we don't know what happened we don't know where we come from right we are orphans basically yes. we don't know where we come from yes, we true. are searching for our mommy and daddy <laughs> and we can never find them you know what i'm saying because there's no records that's going to take us back there and uh it's 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 a hard pill to swallow for anybody honestly to listen to this and i know why people don't want to hear this stuff no more like they like i am so tired of hearing it da, 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 da. but you're going to keep hearing it until we get what we need to climb out of this rut we can't get out if you haven't no, you heard them we haven't moved one hour in yeah, the last 100, 100 years, years. 150 years yeah. we're in the same exact spot sure we look prettier we got education <laughs> you know what i'm saying but we have no wealth but having gained ground yes you know? we're a very very prosperous people only problem is other people prosper off for our labor mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like Look at all the 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 entertainers. Why are they on entertainers? It's kind of the only way black people can get out. I mean, they take their leg up however they can get it. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to say about what you just said. Most people, like you know, like white folks. If if I were uh, our counterparts, our brothers and sisters, I just happen to be white. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, all right, to yeah. be honest, like yeah. I'll be like, okay, like yeah. you know, I get it. Yeah, I get it. Mm -hmm. Um. None of us can change the skin we're in. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying I would. I'm just saying we can't. Right. Uh, but what you were saying is that we have to keep digging in here um, because if y'all haven't noticed and heard this 
theory and heard this conversation for months now, years now, however, however long y'all been following the channel, <laughs> Gary's trying to bridge the gap. Yes. So if we have a country that's hurting, which we do, mm -hmm. um, then we have to find out, you'll say it a lot, you know, our, our, our country's hemorrhaging. There's, there's, there's a hemorrhage somewhere and we have to stop the hemorrhage. Where is it coming from? And one of the major um, hemorrhages is in the black community uh, with this social construct that's happened in, you know, against our culture. And so trying to find out if you haven't noticed, Gary, you're the kind of person you got to take it apart. Yep. You have to take the pieces apart uh, to, to, to put them together to make sense of it. And all that's happened in our culture, I'm not even so much talking about slavery times or anything like that. I'm talking about even now, even now today in 2022, you know, it, it all, I mean, the, the pandemic kind of leveled some things yeah. and put some things on a pl level playing field mm -hmm. a little bit, mm -hmm. a, a very little bit, right. but this, you know, there's still a, a, an, an, an upheaval and an uneven playing ground. Right. And so you're trying to discover, well, you, you've been trying to find out why and what's going on. And I think that this video is, is help you to discover that. Yes. Is put some pieces together. I'm happy for you as a black man. I gotta tell you. Well, okay. And so, I'm happy for myself as the wife of a black man because it's been tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying and to, you know, seeing you walk through this journey over yeah. over 20 years, seeing it, you figure, try to figure it out. Listen, I and we're not and we're not ice an isolated couple that have gone through that. Many of us have gone through that. I'm talking about us, like black folks, black couples, black yeah. married folks yeah. have gone through this particular struggle. Which is one of the this reasons particular why, area. Which is one of the reasons why our families don't stay together. Yeah. You have a situation where black women get a leg up because they're a double minority. They're women and they're black. Mm -hmm. So they're considered a double minority. Mm -hmm. Because of that, they more than likely to get the job over me. It doesn't matter if our credentials are exactly the same. The fact that she's female and black, she beats me. And I know a lot of um, white people are saying, well, they he beat, she beats me too. I agree. They do. But it's not about... Uh, the, the 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 sex part at this particular point. This right here, you this part I mean? is about the culture. This is about the culture mm -hmm. in general. If you're trying to keep a black family together, you cannot have the 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 the, the yeah. husband broke all the time. Mm -hmm. It don't work that way. Like women want resources to take care of themselves, to take care of their kids. And if she's doing all this and you in the refrigerator with the robe <laughs> on, you know what I'm saying? She's like, nigga, get the hell out the damn refrigerator. Oh, get your ass out there to work. And we're like, for what? Like, for what? Uh -huh. I'm sick and tired taking orders for somebody that don't like me. I'm sick of it. It's it's been tough, and it's been it's been a a generational struggle. Um, uh, you know, many of us. I mean, I could think back. I mean, where you think all these movies come, Claudine? All these different yeah, movies yeah, come yeah, from, yeah. where the black man is trying to, you know make it work, save his money, you know, bring something to the table. But it's just, it's been established mm -hmm. for in some way or another. And like this man, I don't know if it remember his name, Anderson, you said? Douglas. Douglas. Um, it's been established at some point or another on purpose. Yeah. And so it's like, then you have, and that's where, that's where the hemorrhage is at y'all. Mm -hmm. Because then, Politically, you have, or governmentally, you have, okay, the black male counterpart in the family has been pushed out of the household so that she can get her Section 8 and she can get her food stamps and go on to assistance. Or, or she went to school, somehow, you know, she was able to get a scholarship, whatever the case, got educated. One way or, or another, he's been pushed out of the house. Right. Because you have the, either the government is, the baby daddy husband, or she's both dad and mom mm -hmm. and doesn't want him there. I don't need you. Right. So one way or another, the, the the nuclear family in the black community has been being eradicated for a long time. Yeah, It's been like for a long time. And don't get me started on now is both of y'all women in the house and there is no man. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, that's across that's, the that, board. You might, as well, you might as well just put a freaking nail in the leg. Acro across the board, this is what's happening, yeah. and there is a hemorrhage in 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 the black community. So I know y'all, especially you know, our, all of our you know, like Oki fan, yeah, and yeah, all, yeah. Of, all of our you know brothers and sisters, y'all white. Listen, we're all family, and we are. But this particular area is also important because we're guys trying to bridge the gap. So yeah. you have all of these all of these pockets of, of pain in the, in the country, mm -hmm. you have these pockets of pain and it's like, where is it coming from? So you have to deal with these other areas that is, you know, cutting off the blood supply. Wow. Like it's cutting off the blood supply. We got to deal with that mm -hmm. so that the whole body can function. You know, I, yeah, I'm glad you said that because I was talking about this with uh brass now a while back and trying to explain to him why I had such a problem working for him. Now, now I have a voice to it because he, he didn't get it or maybe he got it, but it just, because Brad's is not an emotional guy. So when you're looking at him and you're talking to him, you're like, did you get what I said? And he's like, yeah, I got it. It's just, this is how I think about it. And I'm like, okay. And um, I was, I was telling him pretty much, it's not that I don't like working for you. Is the fact that I don't like that I have to work for you. Mm -hmm. It's 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 and it's like, well, I don't understand. You're gonna have to work for somebody. Yes, and I would prefer that to be somebody that looks like me, mm -hmm. because that means we are doubling our efforts. Mm -hmm. Okay, this black man has three kids. I'm a black man that have two kids, and he pays me, but I work for his business that is getting paid by whatever mm -hmm. that goes into my kids. My kids then can put that into another. Okay. Now we got a community, right? All right. I'm going to go mow lawns for a couple of dollars, or I'm going to go bag groceries in our black grocery store, or I'm going to go work at the black hotel, or I'm going to go Wasn't work at, at the, the point. Of that's, what black Wall Street. that's what we're trying that to point. do, yeah. but we can't get it done mm -hmm. because we don't have any land to do it with. There's no land for us to get. Like, yeah, we have black neighbor. He says this. We have black neighborhoods, but we don't have black communities mm -hmm. because where we live, right? Where we live, what was the only black business there was a diner. Yes, it was on the only black business there was a for diner. Like, Everything for like 50 else years. was owned by somebody else. Another the culture. liquor store. Now we had the barber shops, but then the. <laughs> The business sense of of uh, the Puerto Ricans in that time in in that town and their work ethic blew our freaking two chair black business out of the water. It was just no way to compete. They were the up and comers, and you had some folk uh, that been there for. I was gonna ask how to go online and um, put the like highlight the um, comments. Sure. Which one do you want to um, highlight? Well, both of them. We can we could thank the CIA for that, and then this one. Okay. Um, when you ready? Yeah. Uh, just there were not many. It mm -hmm. was just one or two. Yeah. And um, one of the barbers, he was getting ready to retire. That's how he did my. He cut my grandfather's hair. Like yeah. that's how old this guy was. Yeah. And um, then you know, Mr. Charlie. Then, then eventually he passed away. So then, then then there was no successor. Right. There was no one to pass it on to. Right. So. They ended up uh, having to close. I think one of them they kept open. Yeah. But in comparison, there's like 10 up and coming Puerto Rican shops. Right. And they like, you know, they do the suave look and the whole, and then like their whole barbershop is packed on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. You know, with, with all cultures. All cultures. Yeah, with all cultures. Black folks in there, white, like Puerto Rican folks in there, Jamaican, like they're all in there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're right. The, com the competition and the, the drive, the work ethic. But you notice know, you didn't have not one black barber in there. Yeah. Not one black barber. With his chair. And it was right around the corner. And my dude was great. Yeah. So it's like I went to him. But he'll never sit in my chair. Like, I love him. I respect him as a businessman, as a man. And, but he will never sit in my chair. If I was a barber, he would never sit in my chair. He would go to his people. He'll go to his people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, well, shit. And he's saying that because his, his barber is Puerto Rican. So. Yeah. And I'm like, my barber is Puerto Rican. I'll miss him. But, you know, it's like, that's that's what it was. But he had me lined right. 
Every time he had me sharper than a dot. Yeah, you gave you gave Mrs. Charlie, you gave them a good chance. Oh, like, God, I wanted yeah, this way. I tried to do it. I wanted like, this way. He wanted to cut me the way he wanted to cut me. And I'm like, I ain't got time for that. Like, I gotta get cut right. So when Alex came along, you know, I'm saying, all right, cool. And I remember when they faced the first started, they started right pretty much right next to uh, oh, yeah. the barbershop. Oh, wow. And I tried my very best, but dude wouldn't show up, you know. He was always late, having girl issues, oh, and boy. it was just like, bro, I can't, I, I can't even- I got somewhere to be I gotta now. be, yeah, yeah, like, you gotta get, so, and every time I made an appointment with Alex, he was always ready, yeah. always ready. So the business aspect of it is like, I, you can't compete at this point. I have to go to him mm -hmm. because I have a busy, busy lifestyle. I have to be sharp. I can't, I have, I have to be able to schedule it in because I have to be in this car by a certain time for a certain, for a certain amount of um, hours. I gotta be here. So I don't have time to wait for you to get off your phone. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have time for you to do that. So it's like, shit, crap. And this is in the neighborhood where we're talking about yep. having, you know, why is this so up there? Having these, um business ethics and having these these different you know training courses and mm -hmm. and and all of that which you know was not prepared with you know a good amount of our black kids they're not going to you know private schools they're not going to you know Ivy League prep schools they're not they're not it's the majority of them are going to public school and hope to God that they learn something that's going to stick. Mm -hmm. for the rest of their life you know writing a resume oh that's why we i really we talked about it even before we came out here it'd be great for every child to be at some point to attend a trade school because you're going to need to be able to have these life skills some type of a school mm -hmm. that gives you life skills to function in the real world you know so in 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 in, in the inner city it doesn't the, a lot of that's not the case i mean you have these up and coming um, charter schools and stuff like that. And a lot of them are, you know, multicultural or they're only uh, African-American schools or only um, uh, Middle Eastern schools or, or whatever. But that's just in the past five or six years. Mm -hmm. It's very recent, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, I just wanted to highlight those. Um, okay. So you want to highlight this one? Did you have something about this? Right? No, I just, I mean, it was about what we were talking about. Any, both of them or either one of them. It's just, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. So They've been going after the nuclear family for a while now, just recently started to, uh, a hi to hijack the LGBT community with the alphabet mafia to further that goal too. Hmm. And then the, the CIA coming. And we can thank the CIA for that. And I think that was towards when we were saying it was somehow set up mm -hmm. to go after and to target the nuclear family to basically yes. eradicate the nuclear that's family. exactly what it was and it's like they, they, they're they were literally trying to create such a wealth distance between whites and blacks that we will forever be at odds with each other right that was the goal okay yeah. because it's like he did say something about you that you can't if if white people he says white folk i like to say white folk that's how i like to say it but <laughs> politically correct white people you know what I'm saying but um caucasians i like that better caucasians let's okay. say caucasians okay. so uh <laughs> uh if caucasians <coughs> are so far removed from blacks how can we ever get this fixed yeah we can't fix it mm -hmm. all right because there's a major cog in the wheel in, in, in the middle of it like okay we've been as a nation sending tax dollars to our government to take care of issues like this they set things up that sound good on paper but in reality reality created far more problems hmm. all right okay we give the women some money but his ass got to get out and go to work Cause that's originally what it was. Like, you gotta go to work. You can't be here. Get your ass out there and work. And he said, "Okay, I'll go out and the work." And the CIA said, "Uh, take this for your pain and suffering. 
Yeah. It'll, 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 it'll calm you down and relax you. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, they high on drugs and stuff like that, addicted, screwed out their mind. They're not thinking about no damn family. They're not thinking about no kids. They're thinking about getting their next high. Okay, so they started, you know, on a crack front and stuff like that, and they just destroyed black men. Yes. Now, black women are struggling because they got a little bit of money. That I, I, this is how I look at it. If me and you was conversating about, yo, they're offering us money, but you got to go. I'm pretty sure during that time, you would be like, hell no, I don't want you to go. I love you. No, but babe, I'm like, I got to go get work anyway. Right. Because if I was a, a a man that loved my my kids, I would want it. No, I'll go get work and we will only be on this for a little bit. Yeah, It's not going to because th that's what any man would do. I, with, not for just I'll go because they our fans was intact. Yes. Our families was tight. Yeah. So if he left at that time, yes, that was a great option. I right, cool. I have to move out for a couple of weeks, well, a couple of years or whatever, what have you. I'll go get some work, money, get some work. I'll send you money. Right. Mm -hmm. I'll send you money. And, and then when I make enough, I'll come back and we can get off this shit. But that's not what happened. They screwed. the, You know, then they start finding out, oh, you can make money selling this stuff. So you got the best salesman in the world is black people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody about to sell better than you. You know what I'm saying? Because you you got to sell. You don't sell. You don't eat. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like you got to be out there doing your thing. And you sell the drugs and it spreads like wildfire. And next thing you know, you all cracked out three, four, five, six, seven generations of that. And you wonder why we can't get together with our black woman. Cause she looks at us like you ain't shit. What I need you for. I got everything. It was, it's, it's been, it's been established that way instead of what we've been in the past few, you know, years trying to instill in and teach our children, you know, generational wealth, how, you know, how to, to make the economics work for you. You can, they mm -hmm. can read it back to you verbatim, never have a secured credit card and all of that kind of stuff. We try to teach them financial literacy and financial freedom mm -hmm. and, and all of that um, to, to alleviate the pain of the hemorrhaging yep. black families. So. Yes. Well, let's continue. Special people, and because they are special people, they need to be recognized, appreciated, and uh, and reparated for that for what they've done in this country and building this country. They're the ones that built the bridges, the roads, cut the timber, the trees, and cleared the land, raised the tobacco, cotton, indigo. They're the people that fought and raised in every war to protect this country. Those the people coming from Africa or coming from Jamaica did. They came here voluntarily, and if, and and the most important point on this is if you lump them with black folk then you give the dominant white society a justification to say, we don't owe black folk anything. Mm. Because you see, the blackness, that, that, that's native, the blackness, black people, black people's blackness is more than just color. It is their heritage, it's their history, it's their code of conduct, and more importantly, it is their badge of honor, mm. and it's what it, it symbolizes the indebtedness this country has to them. Mm -hmm. This country does not have an indebtedness to, to people coming from Africa. Mm -hmm. It will have an indebtedness to people coming in from the Bahamas. You lump black folk in there, you deprive black folk of the benefit that debt is owed them. Don't do that. Hmm. You That's are a good point. Yes. <laughs> let's, 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 keep, let's keep going here. And, and I want to deal, I want to deal with some of the historical aspects of all of what you're talking about. Okay. But you know, something that is what is 50-year history, for example, is Martin Luther King's uh, uh colorblind dream. Did his and the civil rights movements focus on integration and having the ability to sit at the counter with the dominant society and open up a lot of doors where there was obviously very clear legalized discrimination mm -hmm. to knock down those barriers? Did that take the focus off of Blacks, whites. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. And let me go back before you get to the, get the back of what, what, what Martin Luther picked up. And see, and again, Martin Luther King and the civil rights leaders, they did the best they could at that particular time. Mm -hmm. You know, what they thought was white, but they didn't look far enough down the road. Right. And they got bamboozled and tricked. Because you see, the initial decision and the suit that was filed for what you all might call social integration, the civil rights movement, was filed in McClinton, South Carolina. 
And what those black folk file for, they file for desegregation. And what desegregation means, we don't have the, we don't have the, the, the what Anderson talks about. We don't have those, we don't have, we don't control those resources. We don't have any resources. And so what was happening in McClendon, South Carolina back in 1948, when that, when that lawsuit was filed, those black folk, those black kids were walking to school up dirt road in the rain and snow trying to get to school. They, 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 when they got to school, uh, they didn't have the same privileges in those schools. Like in, like in North Carolina, I was from South Carolina, North Carolina, where we, where we got, we spent the first week of school every year, every year, cleaning up old textbooks, old materials, and used stuff that was coming from the white schools. Whites got all the new materials. They got all the fabrics and tools and machinery, technology. We got to use broken down and had to fix it up, spend the first week of school with big erasers, cleaning up the books and putting tape on them. Yeah, I remember White doing that stuff. In their schools. We didn't have swimming pools. We used to have to go down and dam up the creek to swim. And so when, and then plus that, more importantly, they the white kids rode the buses. We walked. And the, and the, and the, and the worst part about it, that the, that the state was giving something like about $12 for every white child to go to school, but only a dollar, dollar fifty cents for a black child to go to school. What the, what the McClinton, South Carolina people were saying is that we won't have equal control of the resources that you began to maldistribute in the 1790s to everybody but us. We won't have our fair share of it. And so they went to the courts and it, it, it wound up going to the Supreme Court by 1954. At that point, what blacks were wanted was to have equal treatment. Blacks had, blacks had miraculously acquired a lot of communities. They had, they had bars, white, uh, professional football teams, baseball teams. We had a lot. We had our own business. Lane. Land. Land. We had some land there. And by 1920, black folk had acquired about 20 million acres of land in this country that they had to buy. White folk didn't buy their land. They got it free on land grants. And so when Martin Luther came mm -hmm. along, what what uh, what he says is that now, uh, what the NWCP triggered it by simply saying, the worst thing we can do for blacks in this country is, is to eradicate anything that reflects blackness. Let's move now to, let's, 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 let's sanitize everything. Mm -hmm. Let's get rid of all aspects of blackness. That means decent. That, so they change it to social integration. Social integration is a weakening process. But if I put, if I start putting cream in a coffee, I'm not making the coffee any stronger. I'm weakening it. Mm -hmm. If I put water in gasoline, I'm weakening it. So Mark, when Martin Luther came in, he picked it up and he started saying, "What we want is is a uh, is to show white folk that we are acceptable, that we can be that, and, uh, and and to take the focus off our blackness." And when that started, they, they were successful. Then, then the black leadership gave up and say, hey, uh, we can't do it anymore, so we'll just go with what we call benign neglect and political correctness, which makes black folks disappear. And that way nobody has to focus on the black issues anymore. And and that and that and when, when Martin Luther took the focus off of black folk and put it on socially disadvantaged, they would twist over and merge into and morphed into what you call political correctness for everybody. And so therefore they 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 they, they corrupted and 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 it distorted the thirteenth amendment, the fourteenth amendment, the fifteenth amendment, those civil rights laws, those laws were written specifically and solely for black people. Mm -hmm. And that all these immigrants have no rights, there's no justification for it. Mm -hmm. okay, so, no justification so for you it. know, we certainly have the luxury of of, of hindsight now mm -hmm. and, and doing not not Monday morning quarterback, but <laughs> fifty years later quarterback, you know. So what should have been what should have been the focus to achieve a status for black folks that would have prevented 50 years later there being a permanent underclass. Oh, Rock, you just asked. You know, you know, that's a beautiful question. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't target. Mm -hmm. like, what, what they should have done in the civil rights movement say, first, before we do anything, before we start talking about social integration, let's go back and identify what was the primary purpose of slavery. What was mm. the primary purpose? Mm -hmm. The primary purpose of slavery was to classify black, the strip them of their humanity and to make them classify them as three fifths of a human being yeah. and classify them as property. Mm. And so, and therefore, and it, and, and it started with property that anybody can own them. They'd be no different than any other property. Mm. And that's why George Washington said that, the, that, the, that starting this new, new, uh, this new nation, that wealth would be embedded, starting first with land. And so George Washington said in that case in black and uh, owning property. George Washington says, give me 100,000 acres of free land. Thomas Jefferson said, you give him 100,000 acres of free land, give him 100,000 acres of free land. Uh, Patrick Henry says, I want 65,000 acres of free land. Every white immigrant coming to the country to pick up 650 acres of free land, free. Uh, and then they get another 150 acres for every slave he owned. And so, and, uh, 
And then the bottom line, I, 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 the railroads picked up something like about 24 million acres of free land across the nation. Everybody got free land except black folks. Mm -hmm. And then, and see, and, 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 if you, and if you just stop there, the basis for building foundational wealth is in land. And see, and black folks couldn't get four, couldn't even get 40 acres of land. Blacks couldn't get, I get free land because they were, land was property and black folks classified as property there. Yeah. So they passed things like fugitive slave laws, saying you are property. You're no different from the land. And they set up a thing called the American Dream, that you hear all these politics. The American Dream was anybody coming from any place around the world, from in the Middle East, from Asia, Africa, could come into America, and they could get what's called the American Dream. They're still doing it right now. That's what the doctor is. They're coming to this country looking for it. And the doctor, the American Dream is unearned benefits. Slavery was unearned benefits. So they come to this country right now getting unearned benefits, but black folk can't get them. And that's how they go right past black folks. And uh, so it is illegal, unconstitutional, but nobody's raised that issue. In all these discussions about immigration, nobody says that black folks are being negatively impacted. They got all these programs for immigrants. Yeah. They go out and say, we're going to give immigrants social security, welfare, public housing, all that. But you're not going to give it to black folks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, so uh, I, don't think, I don't think we fully completed it's, it's your idea. Of what civil rights, what, what should have been happening. Oh, that, 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 let me go back to that. Mm -hmm. So, so what the first thing they should have done was say, what we first want to do is, is go back and correct the purpose and address the purpose of slavery. Mm -hmm. What was the purpose of slavery? Mm -hmm. The purpose of slavery was to handicap a specific use of a group of people and handicap them and hold them while we while we provide benefits to everybody else. Hold, so, what they first thing they should have done is say, if if this nation is maldistributed, maldistributed, one hundred percent of all the land, resource, businesses, income privileges, rights, and controls of the government to the white society. That's the first thing we must address. We must go back and look at that and address it. And, say, and they didn't, never did that, even when, even when it came out of slavery. They, that, that there was no wealth. Blacks had no wealth. White, the average white person coming out of, at, at the beginning of, uh, end of slavery had 3,500 times more wealth than black. Black folk had never owned and controlled anything greater than one half of 1%. That means that in the present terms of rock, even today, they didn't change the slavery. That the, the right now in this country, we got something like about five to six hundred white billionaires. We got three to three, we got over five to six hundred white billionaires in this country, and uh, and I take the two or three of them has more wealth than all forty four million black folk put together. Wow. Black folk can't compete; they don't own the control and the wealth. Everything from Boston to San Diego, California, all the land, resources, forty four million plus airlines, everything they name it belongs to whites. Blacks only control zero. That's why. Wow. Wow. 44 million. Those few billionaires compete with 44, the whole, the whole population. <laughs> wow. And they just made one less billionaire. They yes. just made one less billionaire, one less black billionaire. I'll highlight this um, comment here. Which one? Um, Vitalize. The, that, that whole that first one and okay. then that's the, the finished part. this one right here yeah all right one of the worst parts of the onslaught against our families is removing self-confidence self-confidence isn't gone but it's difficult to know your self-worth and belonging to a com to in communities in your community when you're when you're where was the next part right there the ne that right there yeah okay. when your family when your family household is in ruins. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right on target. Mm -hmm. This is so important. This is healing to me. I know. Because for years, I just, you know, one of the worst things to hear is, Lamb, you're lazy. I heard that so much that I I literally beat myself into submission physically. I get up at three o'clock in the morning, every morning, no matter what time I go, because I cannot fathom not working. Because I, I will never let somebody say I'm lazy. It's just the craziest thing when you said that. I said, you? Yeah. Now you a lot of things, but lazy ain't one of them. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, it's just that's that's why we got to be careful what we say to people. I say we, all of us, because it's a lot of um, wounds 
that maybe y'all don't see or other people don't see on you, but that you carry for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Some kid said something, some quote unquote, someone that was supposed to be a loved one or a family member said something, someone you admired said something, and it just, it cuts so deep that it frames the, the full outlook of your identity which is the complete opposite of who you are. You literally, literally, I mean, I mean, I mean, workaholic. I mean, that's, I would equate you to that type of personality. Nothing will make you stop working. Yeah. Not the birth of a child, not illness, nothing. So for someone to say that, it's like, well, I'm not going to be equated to the the uh, the stereotype of a, of, a, of a black man or black people mm -hmm. laziness mm -hmm. not me mm -hmm. so he would make himself sick literally um, I mean working in the most ridiculous just unhealthy conditions we're from the northeast I mean it would be however below zero and I don't care and I'm freezing on this box truck and that man knew he was illegal the way he was working that business but that's yeah. another story. And I couldn't stop him because, and you say this a lot, this is one of your sayings that we've coined the phrase, so don't try to take it because it's about to be copywritten. <laughs> I'm so serious. <laughs> I'm so, like you would say, that you're tired of fighting people fighting themselves. Right. You're a war with yourself, and I can't get in the middle of your war with you. Right. And that was a war with you. Right. Um, we just got to be careful what we say to people. Yeah, yeah, which is why I'm trusting that the person I'm thinking about will give me anyway, let's continue. Well, yes, I did want to say something about the whole, um, the confidence, right. The, the self-confidence, right. When you're, when my self-confidence and here's the problem with the whole system, how can I ever look you in the eye the way I want to look you in your eye? When I know I need you, mm -hmm. I, I, I need you and you know it too. I'm not talking about you, the person that's looking at me right now saying, you're talking about me. No, I'm talking about my boss. Let's say I'm, I'm hired by whomever, you know what I'm saying? Nine times out of nine, they don't look like me. I think I worked for one black person once. And all it took for him to do was go on a vacation. Oh, I was gonna say, since I've known you, it was just one. And tell the uh, clerk or the what, secretary. Pay anybody because he went on to a cruise. <laughs> hold the check. Yes, hold the checks. I was like, what? I was so mad. I was so mad. I said, okay, I'll wait. I stayed there all day. Oh, and I went in every 30 minutes. Did he call? You need to text him. Well, he's on vacation. And I was like, I know. You need to text him. <laughs> I was um, like, what? Did he call? You need to text him. Not only was he on a vacation with his girlfriend, Pasla. He was with, on a vacation with his girlfriend. They are not you know all like saying? that. He is married. And he's on a vacation. With, with his mistress. With his interesting woman. He was woman. with his mistress. And he had a church. And the day before church, uh, I, the day before church, I was supposed, no, I was supposed to collect my check on that Friday. Okay. At when I clocked out, I was not done with the church. I was going to come back the next day and finish clean because I just shampooed the carpet. So I didn't want to put the pules back until it fully dried. When I came back and they was re re rejecting my, giving my check. I refuse to finish the pools. I mean, put the pool pit and everything back together. I refuse to do it. No check, no money, no work. <laughs> it's just what it is. So he came back to me and he gave, he took me on, he walked me down a freaking street and he said, when have I ever not paid you? I said, Friday. Right. And he was like, I was going to pay you. I said, I know. What you mean? This is the thing that the I was gonna would have could have should have. Mm -hmm. It does. It counts for nothing. It counts for nothing. And I think that, like again, I don't know. I just keep harping on that. We got to be careful what we say to people, mm -hmm. right? Because 
we have our own, like people say, whatever you see in another person is because probably because that's what you're struggling with. Mm -hmm. And we project our crap onto other people. Mm -hmm. So whoever called you lazy, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe there was, there's something within that person that they know they're not at their hundred percent. And it's something in you that triggers that because you will not stop. So instead of saying I'm lazy, it's you're lazy. Right. You know, it's the projection, mm -hmm. you know? So we just, we have to check that because right. it, it causes way more damage than what's necessary. Mm -hmm. Way more damage. But yeah, to Reverend such and such, I remember him. Yeah. So after, <laughs> after, um, you know, you're funny, you just jog my memory about something else where people will suggest what you should do but they won't show you how to do it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I've never experienced how to cut pipe. I've never experienced any of this stuff. I need somebody to show me. Well, you can go to school for that. Great, with what money? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, what money can I go to school? Oh, there's grants and stuff like that. I'm like, do you know how to fill out a grant? I don't, you know what I'm saying? Can you help me at least do that? Well, you gotta figure it out. Okay, I'll go out there and I do the research and got the research, do the research and you sit there and you realize how much stuff you got to do to get this grant. Yeah. You say, it's so much reading. There's so much work. And if you are operating on an eighth grade reading level, you're not going to want to read that stuff. It's too much. And then it's intimidating because if you say the wrong thing and you do the wrong thing or you fill in the wrong box or you misspell a word and all of the proofreading and proofreading, it's so much work to get that grant. It's like, why bother? It's you know, it's easy to go to work and just make the money and then go to school. But then you got a kid on the way, so you really can't, you know what I'm saying? And even if you did do that, you really have work to time to, and I guess people will say, yeah, you should have time, but it's like, well, you don't really. Nobody has time. It's not enough time in the day to work a job and study for the whatever. And, and it's just, it's, There's it's always going to be something lacking. There's not enough time to sleep. It's, it's not, not, enough, time not enough time. And, and here's why it's not enough time. I know a lot of people look at it like, oh, what do you mean that is not enough time? It doesn't make sense. You could just, you know, do that after you get off of school. If you work an hour away, 45 minutes away, you know, saying it's like the travel distance is, in, is, is crazy. It's like by the time you get back home, you're done. You're yeah. tired. I don't miss it. I mean, all that Jersey traffic and just fighting with people on the road, yeah. you know, just every day. Mm -hmm. It's like, you, you know, we have to, like, a lot of people have to have that tenacity that you have, like that bulldog mentality. You lock hold and it's like, this is the goal. This is the dream. And you would allow yourself to be sleep deprived as long as you're going for the dream yeah. and going for the goal. You know, if you don't have that drive, then yeah, you're gonna go live your best life and go on vacation and put yourself in debt when you know you're not supposed to. Right. That kind of stuff. Yeah, because there's no there's no time to enjoy yourself. So you you go out and do certain things that you shouldn't do. Certain things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. I mean, obviously, yeah, we ha all of us have something that we're lazy about. Yes. But to come out and attack someone and say you're lazy when it's not true. Well, that's, see, that's, that's what different. I'm saying. Like we were in the the. The group, well, actually, we don't use group, we use team. Um, where I'm in a team, and they'll say, I just think you're lazy, lamb. And I'm like, Oh, in that time, it's like the team, and 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 you're looking up to these gentlemen because they're trying to help you, or at least that's what you think, you know what I'm saying? And you're like, Okay, maybe I'm lazy, and then you say, Okay, but how do I get the time? Because if I'm so if, if I'm lazy, then I need to work harder, right? But I'm exhausted. So, like, I, I, I don't. That part didn't connect because how do you call a person that's always at work lazy? Yeah, like I'm always working. Like how I don't. Okay, I, it's better just to say I don't want to help you. Yeah. Because that's what it boiled down to. Yeah. At the end of the day, with that team group or whatever NBI, mm -hmm. they didn't want to help. I doubt. I, they didn't I, want I, a I mentor. They didn't know. I, no, I'm not. I'm not going to. There were two, and I can name them now. Aren't is one of them. There were two that cared. Mm -hmm. Not even the one that you worked with, mm -hmm. 
who you were being in business with, but this person looked at you as a worker. Mm -hmm. He wasn't, he didn't even want to help. He looked at you as competition when he saw what you were up to. Right. They didn't want to help. Yeah. And it's best for people. I mean, just be honest instead of project craziness onto other people. Well, that's, that we cause more damage than, than good. And you know what? That's the point. This is one of the biggest issues of um, me is I don't want to remember them that way. So I don't look at it that way. And I guess that's the, uh, the what do you call it? It could possibly be the, the, the that syndrome, you know, the, the what is it? Uh, Stockholm syndrome thing. Oh. It could be that because I've I've always had to just yeah you right you know what I'm saying because that was the only way I, I I'm I'm just trying to learn and I don't my dad wasn't there so I don't know how good of a man I am which is ironically weird because every last one of them was divorced every last none of them could keep day women and I'm sitting here looking up to these men and I'm like and when I sat there and tried to get him advice on our relationship they would didn't really want to hear it well I'll, I'll do i'm like all right cool and then I, I there was a lot of people there it was just the craziest thing like yeah. why are you giving me advice you're divorced right well no i didn't i didn't take their women advice never i was not that dumb i mean <laughs> never not, and, and if it's from a healing a place of healing and this just is kind of veered off on the topic y'all thank you for hanging in with us <laughs> thank you. um if it's if it's like and the person's healed and they dealt with their toxicity and they dealt with their crap, then it's don't do what I did. Then I can hear that. Yeah, that's different. Well, they did do you say know, that. that. It wasn't that they didn't say those things. It's just when it came down to the relationships, I just didn't listen to them. You know, I mean, I hear them talk, but when it was about giving advice, I listened to them, and and because they did do that. They will say, well, when I did this in my relationship, this happened. So those things I did, but it was their actions that I did not listen to. I was like, dude, I'm not listening to you. You don't even have sex with your wife. Like you are in a sexless marriage. There's no way in hell I can listen to you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's no way, no way I can talk to you about this. Like I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you. So I'm going to be without some too. No, I'm good. No, I'm not doing that. You know what I'm saying? And then you got other ones that was clearly, you know, under the thumb of their wife, it, and it was, it was this was a national, a national group, like mm -hmm. you know. But again, this is men problems, not a black thing. It wasn't an economic. Yeah, that thing. was a men. That was just a men's problem. Um, but when it came down to the money aspect, I was literally like this, mm -hmm. taking notes, mm -hmm. trying to figure yes, it out. Yes, because they had businesses. They had Fortune five hundred companies. One was a CEO. One had. I mean, like they were in a position to help. To, to train, to, to mentor. What's the point of having a position if you're not willing to train and help someone? Now, there was a time where it wasn't that I was lazy. I was intimidated. Mm -hmm. When they start saying I was lazy, I got intimidated to ask for them to show me the way. Mm -hmm. And when I did muster up enough courage to say, can you show me the way? It was always met with excuses. I'm busy. I got this. I got that. Da, 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 da. It was always met with excuses. And I got sick and tired of hearing that. And I said to myself, if I ever get an opportunity, I don't give a shit what it is. If I ever get an opportunity to change my life by somebody mentoring me and teaching me something, I'm going to take it. That's what got me into Oklahoma here. Yes. I only got one shot and I took it. One shot. I did not play with that. Yeah. And it was a very interesting experience because God knows I, I didn't know if this was going to pan out. I mean, it's still early in the game. It may not. You know what I'm saying? I trust it will. I'll tell you what, it's better than where we were. It's way better than where we were. We at least have an opportunity. It's better than where we were. Way better. It's a thousand <laughs> times better. It's better and than where we were. <laughs> I hear it can get even better if we get the right people back in office, which is another thing we want to talk about. But let's continue. Way. That's why right now, 38% of the black folk in America are beneath the poverty line. You got about another third sitting right on the poverty line. They lose their house or their car, and, uh, and they can't compete. As a matter of fact, if black, black folk are on sold such a small amount of wealth in this country, and if, if even if, they, if whites were to stop in racism tomorrow, 
that and it would take black folk another 238 years to catch up with where white folk are today. Mm-hmm. 238 years for blacks to catch up. catch up. Well, because look how long it took to put blacks in the position that blacks are in now. So yeah, it's going to take a long time to get back. To get close to back. Even he with your said, help. He said it was a few, two or three billionaires in the country. That are black. No, he said that there were two or three. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. To, to, to counterpart, to counter the 44 million. Right. <laughs> it's going to take a little time. Yeah. Yeah. That's a... That is one of the most scariest stats I've ever heard in my life. Yes. When she, I heard that, I I was like, bruh. That means my kids got to have kids and have kids and have kids and have kids and have kids. Because you know, we don't last as long. You know what I'm saying? They have to, we have to have so many kids to, 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 to be on a straight and arrow just to do, just to catch up. And it doesn't mean that y'all stop moving. You know what I'm saying? You're still moving too. You're not going to just say, all right, man, we're going to wait for you to get here. You know what I'm saying? You're going to move too. So it's like that gap is going to move with us. And the only, and don't get it twisted. The work that needs to be done must be done by both parties. If we're going to be honest. Yeah. But I don't really trust that's going to happen because if i'm being honest if i had to help anybody in my life i'll help somebody that looks like my kids Mm -hmm. that's a fact it's just what it is Mm -hmm. i would not pass my business on to a non-black person and it's the same thing for other cultures. It's the, it's the same so, thing. Even though we know there's a big problem, the big problem really is, yeah, but. That's the real problem. Yeah, but. I got a couple of kids too, you know, and. You're not going to go out and I'm not going to give them my land. I'm not going to give you my land. Why would I do? I got kids too. And it's like, we get it. We get it. And that's why most blacks still vote Democrat. At least they're able to get a check from them. I mean, when you look at the fear of a single black mother, and she heard Donald J. Trump was going to get in office. She ran her ass and her 3.5 kids to the damn voting machine. To vote Democrat. To vote. A woman that never voted a day in her life. She was in that damn room. Yeah. Because she wanted to make sure she didn't lose her benefits. Her benefits. Yeah. I've talked to so many. I used to do money on make money online back in the day. And I used to talk to a lot of single women. And what was stumped me is, well, actually, it wasn't that I talked to them. It was a, a buddy of mine. We used to do partnerships together. It was a buddy of mine um, at the time. He um, would talk to a lot of single mother women. And his experience was like, once you tell them how much they can make, they start asking, well, I don't think I can do that because if I make too much money, yes, I'll lose my benefits, mm-hmm. and that will that floored us. I've heard it many times. It's like, what? You're willing to because it's a guaranteed check, and I don't have to work for it. So I much rather just I just and they always say I can only make this much. Yeah. I can only make this much. I heard it so many times and it stuck into my brain. When you get a woman who's saying I can only work part time, you work with these women, you know, they go, they go get a job so they can get on more benefits, right? Because they go get the job knowing they're pregnant, knowing they're pregnant so they can get paternity leave from the job. Right. And now they get 
maternity, yeah, paternity is us. Mm -hmm. Maternity leave. So they can get more benefits freely. Mm -hmm. And you're like, hold up. You are messing with the system. You're not supposed to do that. You are holding a job, job hostage so you can get benefits. Mm -hmm. Like, is it no wonder your man can't work and do what he do? You're holding jobs hostage. Wow. So now you now not only do the employee, the employer got to get another employee to hold your position for the next eight, 12 months or whatever. How long, how long? The time. Back. Right. Three months. Three. OK. Three months. He, yeah. So they got to hold it for three months. If you go off early because you had complications with the baby, they start that process early. And they still got to give you three months after the baby. And now they got to hold your job. And most of the time they never went back. Most of the time, they never went back. So you got the, the company paying for you, your child, and your replacement. It's crazy how that happens. Oof, let's continue. Oh, what? Okay. In terms of wealth ownership, two white men right now own more wealth than all 44 million black folks. How can you compete in a society where you only control them? Nothing. And the only thing they're giving you is things that are non-inheritable. And, and, uh, and, and it's like a real-life monopoly game. If you don't own and control the land going around the board, you can't own the water company or the railroads. You own nothing. You're going to either go bankrupt or you're going to jail. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you mentioned a uh, different time, Terry, and you, you talk about uh, you know, uh, uh, going into the schools, what you did for the first week or whatever it was, was to clean up the old books that you got from Oh, you know, that, that would go yeah. hand me down. Then right. I went to a, that's I right. went to a segregated elementary school, and I did. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I remember that we had the books that had come down from the school just up the street from where we were. See, so that's not right, Doc. Right. So. Yeah, that isn't right. You're getting outdated and, information. And, and, yeah. yeah, but aside from that, it deals with the self-esteem of the child. Yeah, because you you literally have a a book from. The previous person who had, you know, it's like you like I used to watch read those and they all had nice penmanship and stuff and all kinds of stuff. Mark the book all up. I remember that, and you do have to like, but see, there was also some good benefits to it because I remember uh and they used to be raggedy, but who cares? You know, there was there was good information in the book, so things would be highlighted and marked down. Yeah, they help you with so it tests. did it did help they a help lot you because you, you now know what information you need to study, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But that was a rare student, and and then there was the, the nerdy students who we did go in there and look for those books and took those books i was never that guy but mm -hmm. you you got them out there would be one once or twice that i'll get a book oh okay you did all the work for me thank you you know what i'm saying and um but i wanted to learn so i'll be racing the answers and stuff because i did want to learn it was just it was a really hard time really hard time lift us up with education so the question is have you education been a equalizer for blacks? No, damn good question. It's been an equalizer for everybody but black folks. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and the amazing part about that is that black folk right now hold the greatest academic achievement on the earth. Holy cow. Yes. See, we're all doing slavery for 360 years. And I never heard anybody talk about this on the Fox Channel, the word of these white redneck conservatives say this. But the problem is that in this country, I don't like that he they said talk that. about how ignorant what he black said. folk are. Wait, right now, that, yes, if black folk are well, he's so don't. don't well, okay, there are some things you're going to have to. I, I should have. I should. Sorry, that baby. was very derogatory. I'm sorry. I thought. I thought. I thought you picked up on it when he said white folks. <laughs> you didn't. The, the, he's a little. Uh, back in the times with with his but the information is there yeah, you know yeah. that that's why some people I, I have a hard have, time I listening have, to so him I do have some yeah family yeah that, from that generation mm -hmm. they stopped talking to us too y'all what, yes. what did you do yeah <gasps> they don't talk to us oh no my more. god republican oh no they don't talk to us no more but it is what it is man i love them dearly and i hope i wish them the best i get i'm doing this for them because they will not do it they don't know to do it you know what I'm saying? This is this it's is an ongoing too late this, type of situation. Yes. And these conversations are going to have to be had. I don't care how much you hate to hear it, it's got to be had. 
I'm going to find somebody that wants to hear it. Yeah. Because this problem is not going to go away, guys. This is a mass, massive problem. Massive problem. You want to get your country back? You're going to have to find a way to adopt a black person. It, it sounds absolutely absurd, but there's no other way to fix it. We can't get to you. Look how I got here. I didn't get here on my own two feet. I mean, I did, but I needed help to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I needed your support to do it. There was no way in hell I was getting out of there without your help. I would have probably got as far as, I don't know, Pennsylvania broke down and that was it. Well, this is our new place for the next 12 years because oh, <laughs> that's how God. much it costs to get this damn car fixed. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like crap. So it's without your no, help, we I wouldn't have been able to do it. And the guy was like, all right, we're going to pray. Let's pray. We need to leave now. I was we're, if we're going, I was we need to go now. I was panicking for my life, guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, this really felt like this is the modern day. Um, what migration? The railroad. Um, Underground railroad. Yeah, this is the modern day monogram. Um, um, the modern day underground railroad. Road. We're going to find a way to find blacks who are hardworking, but just stuck in this matrix that they can't get out. Mm. We're going to build an underground rail for, rail for them to get out of that. Because a lot of it is just because it's no, there's no financial support to get out. They make a lot of money, but they're so they're stuck in their house, their car payment, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? They're, they're mortgaged to the hilt. You know, sure, they make a crap ton of money, but their expenses are almost ten thousand dollars. No month. point of working. It's that, like that was the that was the thing we we're saying that when we were there. Like, what was the point? What mm -hmm. is the point mm -hmm. of making these figures? And it all goes to expenses. Yeah. All of it. Everything. Everything. Because taxes come hit you first. Yeah. You're a worker. Y'all heard that the modern day. The modern underground day underground railroad. railroad. Let's continue. There were polls on them. For 360 years, it was against the law, Rock, to be caught teaching a black person to read and write. It'll cost you 39 lashes and a, and a $100 to teach a black person to read and write. Mm. And, 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 that, and that was all the way up to, all the, way up to the 1860s. And so in 1860, when blacks came out of slavery, you got to understand 96% of black folk in America could not read and write. And, uh, and, but oh, well, guess what? The immigrants coming into the country, the, 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 the white people class that white white immigrants coming to the country, they had a 96% ignorant rate too, illiteracy rate. And so, but between 19, between 1865 and, eight, and 19, 1895, black folk reduced their illiteracy rate from, from, from almost 196% all the way down to 40 some percent. And that and they did it by themselves basically. They hold a record of achievement. Nobody in the history of the world has ever come out of slavery and be able to reduce their illiteracy rate. By, by by in half in 30 year time period. But what happened, the reason that it didn't benefit black folk, that by 1950, as an example, there was, the black folk never got the benefits of getting an education. Hmm. There were no benefits to track their education, hmm. e education achievement. That's why the white teachers were waking twice to three times more than a black teacher in the mm -hmm. 1950s. Mm -hmm. In the 1950s, a black person, a black teacher with a college education, a law and teaching degree, he could only earn 50% of half of what a white high school dropout was earning. Jeez. Because the benefits for education never follow black folk. That's why right now I got all these black folks going to school, Howard University, I'll the university, coming out with master's degrees, mm -hmm. but they don't master anything. They got master's degree, but master nothing. Ooh. And they actually have them working at McDonald's, Sit, Burger King, and Windows, Sitting Windows, in Howard, Howard University's so radio studio so <laughs> saying that. So they're still dependent on other people to use their education. And, and, and to use their education, the white society puts the value of that education. You can have a doctor's degree, but but I'm gonna pay you what I want to pay you because you don't have you have no place else to use it. Thank you. you have no else. To use it. Thank you. I'm gonna pay you what I want to pay you, but dude. You can't do what you're gonna do. You need to. You need me, and that's how so many of us get treated, especially in the north. 
Yes. We get treated like, yo, listen. And oh, yo, she gonna oh my it. God. It was one guy. I remember him. Yo, to this day, every time I think about that freaking uh valet place oh. that I worked at and how disgusting he was, man. Like <laughs> he must have watched his father treat blacks this way and get away with it. Maybe. Because he treated me like shit. He would it was like, bruh. Go to the comments because it's, it's, to, it's to the point of what you just said about dealing with difficult people. And actually, someone just said something about that. Mm -hmm. You said the comments, right? Yes. Okay. What's up? Go up to Vital right here. The, the uh, one up from that. This one here? Yeah. Okay. Gary, I was in the same boat as you and had to learn to deal with difficult people. I was something, it was something that was not taught to me and I had to learn it through difficult situations. That, that subject is not, uh, Taught in schools. Thank you for example. Okay, that subject is not taught in schools. Thanks for ex exactly. So yeah, um, that was a major problem. I couldn't get the information that I needed in school. So what did I do? I went to the internet and I just researched. When I lost my job in two thousand and eight, I had no way of getting to work. My wife was seven months pregnant. There was no way for me to get to work because I literally just lost my license. Okay. The reason why I was working that job, because I used to be a car salesman and you can't work at a car dealership without a license. So I lost my driver's license because of a car accident that I had way back when I was 18 years Teenager. old. I mean, uh, 23 years old. Yeah. So that thing came back to me and they said I needed to pay $5,000 get my license back restored and i'm like five thousand dollars might as well be five million dollars because i don't have no way to pay for that all right so what did i do my wife and i she we had to we had to buckle up she had to drive me every she had to drive me to work every day seven months pregnant gotta drive me to work every single day because i refused to break the law i refused to break the law and I refuse to go to jail over something stupid like not like like driving on a suspended license and I didn't trust cops at all so there was no way I was going to ever give the law an opportunity to put me in jail for anything so I for five years I didn't have a license and then I found out that my kid had um she he's under the spectrum boy did that help me that was great that was great motivation to keep pushing forward when i heard that one and um now i'm stuck home and i don't give a crap about money i don't give a shit when i heard that my son bruh baby i'm sorry you gotta go to work i'm staying home with my kid and I stayed home and I made sure every single day he had his nose in those books. I had his nose. Okay, what is this picture? That's a bottle. I'm I'm at it. We had tutors come in because Patterson is very good with with getting that um, kind of stuff. New Jersey. Uh, yeah. When they're young, it's early childhood. When they're young, mm. it's all hands on deck when they're young. Mm. Right. So that was a good thing. And um, yeah, I I went to the internet and I had to learn. I taught myself uh um it was um uh code, you know, script how to build websites and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um it was um HTML code that I learned. Oh, wow. Remember? Yes. I was learning HTML. I so I started designing websites and He's good as y'all can tell. Right. He does everything so but yeah, you right. were self taught all the way up to now all this is self-taught because that was the only way for me to learn anything i couldn't go to school so i went to the only place that had it i went to youtube and i learned everything from 
YouTube, tubvid.com. He was the very first person that I went along and learned Dreamweb Reaver with, oh tubvid.com. Almost t over 10 years ago. And he's doing excellent right now. Excellent. I don't know what who he really is anymore because I really, he never was like personal in his videos. He just, you know, made it amusing and entertaining while he teached you uh code and stuff like that so it was it's great because no i love it oh, okay. it's beautiful <laughs> but um yeah he did all that stuff and it was wonderful it was excellent excellent experience for me however everything else in my life was falling apart because she had to work and miss her baby's first steps she had to work and miss her baby's hair first haircut she had to work and miss just about her everything she missed his first real smile I, it was crazy crooked weird, weird as hell because he did when he was like he's trying to get their muscles together <laughs> and i was like damn that was creepy but it's cute now you know what i'm saying like it was so beautiful to so all the parents out there. yeah to all those parents out there so we was at yeah, odds was a, a lot time. because of that because she missed so much so when she was able to come home and be with nate she's like no my baby no 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 my baby i don't care i'm a mother no and i would say you're gonna spoil them you're gonna spoil them you're gonna spoil them and then one day she realized i spoiled them <laughs> and I was like, I was like, hell. <laughs> yeah. and, and and I and we weaned him off. It only took like what a week to get him sleeping by himself again. Mm -hmm. So um it was it was it wasn't that tough, but it it was what it was. And we 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 tag team the kids. Um and money just took a back seat because my focus was my boys. And uh thank God I had a woman that was willing was able to do that and I focused on the the, the 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 stuff next thing you know I'm building websites making good money she come home we good you know what I'm saying and life continued um but I said all that to say is that you're right it was not taught in schools and I you have to get out there and learn it that is absolutely right I can't now see myself putting all my work into a corporation that's going to rip me of taxes and make it harder for me to get to the next step i much rather just build my own stuff entrepreneur speaking here y'all so i just rather do that because i'm like dude i'm not about to pay into a system that's going to kill me i never get under the, i know i never get from under this rock i'm always going to have to work and a lot of you are still realizing that they'll do anything to make sure they don't lose their workers they inflation is at an all-time high they doing that on purpose dude like we already know we done learned what real freedom look like we don't know what making money look like wait this is what making money feel like holy crap everybody happy everybody having sex we having good time <laughs> You know what I'm saying? We happy. We just, you know, I'm pregnant, baby. That's good. We making money. You know what I'm saying? We get, ah, go ahead and have that, baby. We good. Then 2022 comes. Baby. <laughs> ah, I got to feed the kid and the kid and the kid. Oh. It was just like that. You know, it's, it's crazy. But listen, I hope you guys enjoyed yourself tonight. Um, I'm not going to finish this up. If you want to go and watch the rest of it, brace yourself because what he has to say about the Constitution was very interesting. And our forefathers, and I would really love to bring that forward. I'll probably do the rest of that video myself. But if you want to go and subscribe to the Rock uh, Newman Show, there's going to be a link in the description for your convenience, so you can go ahead to do that. Also, if it's the first time you're seeing Gary Lamb, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, like the com and comment, because I'm always in my comment section. Make sure you comment. This is Gary signing off. This is Latoya Lamb signing off. Hi, guys. You guys have a good one.